everyone, and welcome back to Fam Health. As we know, September 29th is celebrated as World Heart Day Around the World and is part of a global initiative to enhance awareness about heart disease and also to uh, inform people about risk factors that might lead to heart disease in order for people to manage them a little bit better. Today, we have the pleasure of having Dr. Malasari here to speak with us about um, heart disease and World Heart Day. And thank you so much, sir. Dr. Malasari is a, uh, you know, one of the great cardiologists of India. So thank you so much, sir, for taking out the time to speak with us today. Thank you for inviting me for this uh, video call for the uh, for the transmission for World Heart Day. Thank you. So I think um, because of the current pandemic, a lot of people may not be going to the hospital, especially if they have heart disease uh, related issues, because they do feel they're at greater risk. So should one go to the hospital for heart related issues at this time during the pandemic, in your opinion? It's an extremely important question. Uh, because, uh, you know, the, the risk of you dying of a heart attack or an emergency because of a cardiac illness is much higher than if you go to a hospital uh, of you risking a COVID pandemic uh, infection. Uh, uh, so, in fact, we've seen it all over the world that patients don't access care even when there's an emergency because of the worry of the pandemic. And also because of lack of access, both because, you know, you may have the problem, you want to go to the hospital, but you can't get the ambulance. Many hospitals are closed because of the pandemic, so you can't access a nearby hospital. And so there's a lot of delay in access and treatment, which unfortunately complicates. And one of the causes of increased death, which happened all over the Europe and US during the pandemic is just people sitting at home and not accessing care. So the first thing I want to tell people is that if you have and had a procedure or even if you didn't have a procedure and you're having a very unusual chest pain and you're say having risk factors, then you should go to the hospital. Sitting at home with a heart attack or a stroke is extremely dangerous and you would rather succumb to that rather than the COVID pandemic. At the same time, if you just want a blood pressure checkup or a sugar checkup or just a routine checkup, you certainly don't need to go to the hospital. And don't go to the OPD. All you need is a video consultation uh, or say a mechanism like what we're doing today in a, on the Zoom. Just check with your doctor and check what you need to adjust your blood sugar, blood pressure, or whatever. But at the same time, any emergency treatment should not be not availed by people just because the pandemic is on. The pandemic is going to be on for some time. It's going to be lasting for another six months for sure. And sitting at home with a heart attack is not a good thing to do. And sir, what is your advice to people generally if you had to give a message? And what level of care should people be maintaining? Well, I don't think they need to get worried. They should just do the what we have been told by the doctor to do. That keep your sugar down, keep your cholesterol down, keep your weight down, take your medicines correctly, do your exercise well. That should be standard. Now, the routine follow-ups, as I said, need not be carried out in a hospital. It should be moved away from hospitals. You know, and that is a good part of the pandemic has taught us. A lot of unnecessary uh, going to hospitals was there, which will go down after the pandemic, which we have learned now the hard way the, that it's not required. Why do you want to go for a blood pressure check or a sugar check to the hospital? You would rather get it done at home by yourself. So there's no need to, you can consult your doctor on the phone and just treat what you have to treat. But at the same time, I don't want to underplay or underestimate the importance of a timely check when the problems arise. So there should not be a hesitation to access care when problems do arise. And that's where the differentiation is very important. We are not saying don't go to the hospital. We are saying go to the hospital if required. And for routine checks, not required. You need to stay away and get things looked at at a distance. And this is where healthcare will go in the future. A lot of them will become, uh, you know, uh, video consultations and teleconsultations in the future. And we're changing the way we are seeing people. And I think for emergency services, uh, the doors of the hospital should be always be open. Doctor, so um, stress, let's talk a little bit about stress. Is stress an important, you know, precipitant for heart disease or what, what is your view on that? problem with stress, it is not easily measurable. You know, you can't measure stress. I can measure your weight. I can measure your abdominal girth. I can measure your blood pressure. I can measure your blood sugar. I cannot measure your stress. 
So what cannot be measured cannot be, you know, sort of calibrated as what is the risk. So we know for sure, there is no doubt that stress is a precipitant for many of the events which happen. But primarily, just stress can it create a heart disease. Well, there's not much data because it can't be calibrated. I can't say today now you're stressed, tomorrow you're not stressed. How do I calculate this? How do I know it? So it's more uh, abstract sort of a thing. But we all know that stress is a big precipitant. You, 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 you are under stress and you have underlying heart disease and you get worked up, you get a heart attack. You shout at somebody, you get chest pain. You have a fight at home, you may get a chest pain. So these things are precipitation, no doubt. But I think that there are also causes of heart disease. Unfortunately, like for example, urbanization. You have, just imagine a poor rural man who has never lived in a, a city, he's moved into a city for a job. He suddenly has his own house, now he's living in a slum. He's running around, you know, one hour in a train to go to work in Mumbai uh, and, and pushing around with all that crowd. He comes home, his family is not with him. So the amount of stress that he's going through is not measured. And he gets a heart attack. He's a lean, thin guy. He's not eating much. He's not smoking. But he gets a heart attack. And then you say, what's the problem here? You know, why is he having a problem? And in my opinion, that was stress, but it was not very well measured. And it was, uh, the second thing is, I may be stressed, but I may be able to handle that stress well. Somebody else may be stressed, but cannot handle the stress properly. So uh, there are people who get stressed, who can handle stress well, and they're able to manage that very well. And that, that's fine. But if you don't know how to handle stress, then you may get worked up for the smallest thing and get into trouble. So I think the stress is a very unmeasurable, abstract, unpredictable event, which we can't measure. So unfortunately, cardiologists have never put that as a major risk factor, but I think for sure it's a precipitant. And if you could measure it by some way, then maybe one day we'll say that's also a risk factor. Mm -hmm.